Okay, so several of you have been asking uh, for help with uh, questions 12 through 15 on 2.2, and I've already replied to a couple of via email, and it's not really easy. So rather than continuing to do that, I thought it'd be easier just to put together a short video that you all can, uh, can watch. So here's my version of 12, right? It's going to be different than yours with uh, different numbers, but of course, everything is still done the same, same way, right? You just have different numbers. Um, they tell us that they can rent all 50 apartments if they charge $1,600 per month, but she rents one fewer apartment for each $50 increase in monthly rent. And the first thing we do is we fill out a table uh, based on that information. Well, uh, don't overthink it. This is simply if I rent 50 apartments, I can rent 50 apartments if I charge $1,600. So the total revenue is just 50 times $1,600 or $80,000. But if I raise the rent to sixteen fifty, I'm only going to rent forty nine of them, and then I make eighty thousand eight fifty. And then, of course, if I raise it by fifty dollars again, I lose one more tenant. But then it's seventeen hundred times forty eight, which is still eighty one six hundred. So you can see that rent's going up, right? So rent increases. There obviously will be a certain point where they call the law of diminishing returns, where sooner or later the rent will go up enough so that when the apartments go down, we'll actually start losing money, right? We'll make less than than, than what we are in, in these situations. All right, so now we want to write an equation that gives revenue from apartment rentals if she makes X increases of 50. So X is going to represent each $50 increment. So in the case of this first one, x equals 0. Here, x equals 1. And here, x equals 2. Right? Because she went up by 1 increment of 50 and then 2 increments of 50. All right? So now we've got to figure out, well, how do we get revenue from that? Well, revenue is price times um, units, right? Units of things. Well, the units of things is she starts with 50, and every time she increases the rent by one increase, she loses one renter. So every $50 increase, right, every X many of $50 increases results in X many people not renting, right? So you can see up here, 50 minus 0 50 minus 1, 50 minus 2. So here is basically quantity. And then now we got to figure out price. Well, price is also going to be something based on X. It's going to be in terms of X. Well, our base price starts with 1600 And then what do we do? We add $50 times every increase, right? So an increase of when X equals 1, we added $50, 1650 when x equals 0, we were just at 1,600. And when x equals 2, right, we add 100 and we get that. Now we want to multiply these two together and clean it all up. And you're going to get negative 50x squared plus 900x plus 8,000. Which, 1, 2, 3, 4, wait, 80,000, sorry. 80,000, all right? Which makes sense, right? Because remember, X is the amount of increases. So if X is zero, meaning we don't increase the rent at all, then we get that $1,600 times 50 and we're back to that 80,000. And then as we increase, blah, 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 everything goes up. Now we can see that because our leading coefficient is negative, we know this parabola is going to face down. So we know there is going to be a maximum point at the vertex. So if we wanted to maximize this, we would do minus b over 2a, which would be negative 900, right? Because minus b over 2a, so 2 times negative 50. So negative 900 over negative 100, which of course gives us 9. So that means it, when x equals 9, right? This is x equals 9. That, incre that maximizes our revenue. Now that doesn't mean that we rent 9 units. It means we make nine increases of $50 right to the price. And that also means that we lose 
nine units, right? Nine renters. So we'll have 41 renters and our price will be 1600 plus nine times 50, which is 450. So 2050. And if you multiply those two together, that would give you the our maximum amount of revenue. But here, all they want is the rent that she should charge to maximize her revenue. Well, we found that to the, the vertex is when x equals 9. And if we plug that back into this function, we get that it is $2,050 per month. Okay, that's that one. 13 is relatively similar. I mean, it's, it's really kind of the same idea. It's just a different scenario, and the, and the prices and quantities are changing with a, with a different um, function, right? with a different rule. So in this case, um, she starts off, she basically, um, the owner charges $560 if 40 or fewer skaters attend. And by that logic, the cost is $14 per skater if they have all 40 skaters. So there you go. There's $14 per skater for a total revenue of five sixty. dollars That's how the first one comes from. However, for each five skaters above 40, she reduces the price per skater by 50 cents, right? So if she's got 50 skaters, that's two steps of 50. Remember, X is going to equal, uh, like think of it as uh, the number of groups of five extra skaters so when x equals two that means there were 10 more skaters right 10 more skaters sorry for my horrible writing skills but i'm trying to do this quickly and when x equals two the price goes down by a dollar, right? 50 cents and 50 cents again. So now the price is 13. And if you do 13 times 50, you get 650. And then we add 10 more skaters. So it goes down by another dollar, which is 12. And then 60 times 12 is 720. Again, we can see the revenue increases. We want to write an equation that describes the revenue with X groups of five or more. So again, X is going to be defined as these groups. So in this case, x equals 0, x equals 2, and here, x equals 4, right? It's always a good idea to kind of label what your x is. It just kind of helps you figure out what the heck is going on. Okay, again, revenue is quantity times price. Well, the quantity, that's a q, is we start at 40, and then we're going to add five skaters times X because remember X equals a group of five skaters. So when X equals one, we've added five skaters. When X equals two, in the case of this, we've added 10 skaters and we get 50. Okay, now that we have quantity, we need to figure out price. And remember, price starts at 14. It doesn't start at 560. That was revenue. Price was 14. And then her price goes down by 50 cents for every group of five skaters, right? So if we'd write 50 cents as 0.5 because everything's going to be in dollars, right? We need the same stuff. Now we have to multiply this out to figure out what we have to, um, you know, to get our parabola and so we can solve it. So 40 times 14, 560, 40 times negative a half, right? Gives us negative 20x, 5x times 14, gives us plus 70x, and then 5x times negative a half gives us negative 2.5x squared. So we clean this up just a little by combining our terms. So we got plus 50x, right, 70 minus 20, minus 2.5x squared. We can see we've got that leading coefficient, right? I mean, we should be writing it negative 2.5x squared plus 50x plus 560, if we want to put it in standard form. There's our negative leading coefficient. We know it goes down, so therefore we know we have a maximum. We can find it by finding the vertex of minus b over 2a, which of course is negative 50, right? All over 2 times negative 2.5, or negative 50 
over negative 5, which equals 10. So when x is 10, that's going to maximize our things. And they want to know the number of skaters. Remember, the number of skaters starts at 40 plus 5 x right so if x is 10 we got to plug it in here to find quantity so we get 50 plus 40 and we get 90 uh total skaters and then of course for your um your revenue function uh you would put uh either this or i think actually the system would take if you just left it like this either one of those should be fine okay on to 14 the figure shows one study's projection for the agent's total uh, resources initially rising from taking over the assets of a failing uh, plans, but then fa falling as more workers retire and pay out. So what kind of function might be used to model the agency's total resources? Well, if we look at this, right, this is a quadratic. We can tell that it looks like a horseshoe, so we know it's quadratic. That's easy. And then if a function of the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c were used to model these total resources. Well, that's just the standard form of a quadratic. Would f of x have a greater than zero or less than zero? Well, it opens down, remember? And if it opens down, that means the leading coefficient, which is a, has to be less than zero because the graph opens down. So that's pretty easy. Um, if the model for part b used x as the number of years past 2004, explain why the model would have b greater than 0 and c greater than 0. Well, basically we know that when we set it up like this, the vertex occurs after 2004, right? So here's 2004. So when we get to this spot here, here's our vertex. So in that case, if, if we let x be the number of years past 2004, if it happened at like 2007, x would equal 3, which is a positive number, right? So x would be positive. So we know that this number, right, because minus b over 2a equals x, right? This gives us the x portion of our vertex. So this thing has to be greater than 0. And since a is less than 0, that means the bottom number is negative. And for this whole thing to be positive, we have to have a negative over a negative. So that means b must be positive as well. So that's where we get that. So we know that b is greater than 0 because we knew that a was less than 0. And that's how we found that. Now, furthermore... The value of c, remember c in this function, if we have ax squared plus bx plus c, c happens when x is equal to 0, right? If we zero off x, we get the function just equals z. Well, if we're letting x be the number of years past 2004, that means x starts here, so x0 is here, and we can see that's a positive number. So we know that c has to equal roughly 40, right? And so we know that... Um, c basically equals the function evaluated at zero because that's when x equals zero that's what this means or the y-intercept that's what it's called and so therefore it has to be greater than zero so that's what's happening with that question it's just a lot of vocabulary okay the last one that people were asking about 15 anytime you're dealing with multiple graphs and you're trying to figure out which graph matches your stuff it's really just plain a process of elimination so if we look at this function, what do we know about this function? We know it's a quadratic, and we know it opens down. So eliminate any graphs that don't do that. Well, crap, they're all quadratics. They all open down. Okay, what else do we know? We know that the y-intercept is 35, right? Because when, when t equals 0, we're on the y-intercept, and we know it's 35. Well, this is 20-something. That's 35. That's 20-something, and that's 35. Okay, so we've eliminated those two. Now we have these two graphs. What's the last thing that differentiates these two graphs? Well... We can look at the vertex here. The vertex is here, which looks like it's about there. And then we can look at the vertex here, which looks like it's a little less than 50. Okay? So we can easily calculate the x value of our vertex by doing minus b over 2a, which in the case of my numbers is minus 0 0.43 
all over 2 times negative 0 0.0032, which is going to give me a positive number, which makes sense. They have to be positive, right? Because x is out here. It's past 0. And then if we figure out what it is, it will tell us um, which one it is. So I don't want to waste the time doing the math, but you guys can do that and figure that out on yours. Now, from the equation, identify the maximum point on the graph. Well, of course, that just means whatever this number is. You know, So let's say we do the, the math and it comes out to be uh, uh, 60. And we know that it's now this one instead of this one, right? Because this one's a little bit less than 50. This one's between 50 and 100. So we know this is our answer. Then we take 60. We plug it into this function. It spits out an answer. And we write our answer here. But just be careful. They want it in the form of t comma um, y, and the parentheses are already here. So you would write 60 comma and then put in whatever the output is, right? Whatever the, the profit is. And then in what year is the percent of women workers at its maximum according to this model? Well, again, if um, our, if our answer was 60, we have to pay attention to that t is the number of years past 1970. So we would add 60 to 70, right? And we would get the year 2030, okay? So that's how you tackle all those questions, guys. Hope that helps.